Hello, we are in lesson 5 corresponding to Gauss's law. In the introduction, we already saw the concept of flux, then we announced Gauss's law, and now we are going to apply it to a problem. We are going to calculate the electric field created by a volumetric charge distribution. But first let's recall what Gauss's law said. It says that the electric field flux through a closed surface is equal to the net charge enclosed inside it divided by the electric permittivity in the vacuum epsilon sub-zero. The mathematical expression is as shown on the screen. The flux corresponds to the surface integral of the scalar product between the electric field and the differential vector of S. This flux is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the electric permittivity in the vacuum epsilon sub-zero. In the drawing, we have depicted a Gaussian surface enclosing that point charge Q. At that point P, we have marked a surface differential and we have posed the two vectors with which we work in Gauss's law, which is the electric field vector and the differential vector of S, which is a vector perpendicular to the surface at this point and outward. Gauss's law is used to calculate in a simpler way the modulus of the electric field created by charge distributions with symmetry. In this particular case, we are going to calculate the electric field created by a spherical volumetric charge distribution of density rho coulombs per cubic meter. It is going to be a sphere of radius r capital R and we are going to calculate the electric field at a point P located at a minuscule distance r from the center of the distribution. The steps to follow are as follows. First, we must ask ourselves, how is the structure of the electric field we are looking for? How are the field lines? Then we will choose a suitable Gaussian surface, which has to be an equipotential surface. Then we will calculate the electric field flux through this chosen surface and see what charge it encloses. And finally, we will apply Gauss's law to clear the modulus of the electric field we are looking for. In this case, how is the structure of the electric field we are looking for. The distribution has spherical symmetry and the field lines are therefore radial. The modulus of the electric field will depend on the smallest distance r from the center of the distribution. Then we must choose the Gaussian surface. It must be an equipotential surface. Recall that equipotential surfaces are those to which the electric field is perpendicular at all points. In this case, as the electric field is radial, the equipotential surfaces are spherical surfaces concentric with the distribution. The Gaussian surface has to be a closed surface, so it is going to be a spherical surface of small radius r passing through the point P where I want to calculate the electric field. We are going to calculate the flux through this Gaussian surface and we are going to see what charge it encloses. In this case, we are going to differentiate two zones, the zone outside the distribution and the zone inside. For the outer zone, for lowercase r, larger than the radius of the distribution, we choose a point P where we want to calculate the field. At any of these points, the electric field and the differential vector of S are parallel, so the scalar product between these two vectors is the product of the modulus. Moreover, all the points of this Gaussian surface are at the same distance r lowercase from the center. Therefore, the modulus is constant and can go outside the integral, the flux being equal to the electric field modulus multiplied by the area of the chosen Gaussian surface, that is E times 4 pi r lowercase squared. The charge enclosed in this case by the Gaussian surface is equal to the total charge of the distribution. It is equal to rho times the volume of the distribution. It is equal to rho times four-thirds of capital PIR cubed. Let us now turn to the inner zone for lowercase r smaller than the radius of the distribution. In this case, we again choose another point, P prime, through which we pass the Gaussian surface, a spherical surface of radius r lowercase, and we observe that it is also true that the electric field vector and the differential vector of S are parallel. Therefore, the scalar product between them is the product of the modulus. Moreover, all the points of the Gaussian surface are still at a constant distance, r minuscule, from the center of the distribution. And therefore, the modulus of the electric field is constant, 
and can go outside the integral, the flux being equal to the electric field modulus multiplied by the area of the new Gaussian surface S prime. In this case, it is equal to E times 4 pi r squared, exactly the same as above. What does change is the enclosed charge. In this case, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is not the total charge of the distribution. In this case, it is smaller. It is rho multiplied by the volume of the Gaussian surface, which is 4 thirds times pi times lowercase r cubed, not uppercase r as before. Next, we will apply Gauss's law to the two zones. In the outer zone, the flux we have calculated to be worth E times 4 pi r squared and is equal, according to Gauss's law, to the enclosed charge from epsilon sur zero. As the enclosed charge is this expression that we see on the screen, the modulus of the electric field can be cleared and gives us this expression. To add the vector character to the electric field, we multiply by the unit vector u sub r, which is a vector of modulus 1 and radial. In the inner zone, we act in the same way. The flux is E times 4 pi r squared, the same as before. What changes is the enclosed charge, which in this case is rho times 4 thirds of pi r minus r cubed. In this case, clearing the electric field gives us rho times lowercase r divided by 3 epsilon sub 0. We multiply by u sub r to give it the vector character. Finally, we have plotted the dependence of the electric field modulus created by the spherical volumetric charge distribution of density rho coulombs cubic meter as a function of the distance r minuscule to the center. We see that for the inner zone for lowercase r smaller than the radius of the distribution, that dependence is linear. The electric field is increasing as we get closer to the surface. And then from there, as we move away, it is decreasing. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next day.